originally from Sierra Leone. I was born in Sierra Leone, Côte d'Etat, but my parents are from the Gambia. I went to school in Sierra Leone. I did everything in Sierra Leone. It's French is a country I love. I left Sierra Leone when I was 27. That was 1997. Yeah, yeah that's, you know, I was still young, I was still strong, active. Well, not in plan, just, and I met, when I came to Guinea, I met somebody who was a businessman who said, I know him passionately, he said, well, I think the war in Sierra Leone is going to extend, it's going to grow. So if you have some money, I will help you to get a visa, mm -hmm. and we come to France together, because he was a businessman who traveled every time. So just ask for a few amount of money, like, to get me a visa, then we can come. It was not my dream to come to France. It was not my plan to come to France. It just happened. So when I came to France, I was a refugee. And before then, I didn't speak no French. It's when I came. To, <coughs> sorry, when I came to France, I started learning French. I started to integrate myself to the French society. Started to go out, meeting friends, and try to understand the French culture. I was living in a homeless home because I didn't know nobody there at that time. So they were a home for people where you can go and sleep at night. In the morning, you have to go out. So there I was doing for many, many months before I start meeting people. So they start telling me you don't have to sleep at that place. Because when I came, I came as a refugee, so you need to go to the refugee process. So it, it takes a long time. Start following my refugee status. My status was status for many, many more years, for two years roughly, until I met uh, my French wife. But when I told her, well, I'm still a refugee from Sierra Leone, she said, well, I don't care. I just want to be with you. I just wanted to say, if you want to stay with me, then we can live together. So that's how we decided to live together, and we get married, Then I start working, living there. I, I never decided to leave France. It just was, was very nice, comfortable in France. It's just like I have a friend that was in Austria. When my business was not working for me anymore, he just told me, well, there's a good business going on here. Like people are going to the villages, getting old cars to send to Africa, and you move a lot. So if you can come to a grass, I can show you the way to get these cars from the villages and take them to Africa. That's why I came here. Okay. But it was not my plan to come and live in, in class. Yeah, I love integration. I love when I go to any country or wherever, wherever I go. I like to meet the people there. To be part of the people, be part of the society, then go out, talk to people that are French people or whatsoever, to be part of a society. How did you get to Graz? In train? In bus? How did you...? On train. On train. I took the train, yeah. I took the train from Gardino, from Gardiles, yeah. Mm. That's why I took it from Did Paris. you have a lot of luggage? No, I have only one small and luggage. Only one. What is your opinion to Ausländer in Graz? Too little, we do. Ostern in Graz. Ausländern. Ausländer in Graz. Ja. Danke. Wir brauchen noch Danke. Danke. Die sollen gehen, wo sie hin, wo sie herkommen. Wir wohnen leider in so einem Haus, wo jede größere Wohnung, wo es frei wird, eben besetzt wird von Ausländern. Wir haben schon viel gestohlen. Und dann habe ich schon ein bisschen Abneigung. Ich bin mit dem Bus gefahren ja. nach Göste und dann ist ein, ein Herr, der Ausländer da. Ich stecke aus, wenn ich so trage nicht. Ja, das habe ich ganz, ganz, ganz schlimm gefunden. And what was your first impression when you arrived to Graz for this new life, for this new style? Well, I cannot tell more because I came just two days after when I went to prison. Two so days? Yes, spent two days here. I went to prison. I came around on the 11th and I went to prison on the 13th. So like two days only in Graz. So I have no experience to tell anyone about Graz. So I, I didn't see the town much. I just went maybe to the internet cafe. I went there, but I didn't see much in class. I cannot tell much that time. 
I was in the flat sitting there when the police just came in and just hit the door and tell everybody to police eye, nobody should move. So then I was arrested with four people then, there are three people, sorry. We are sitting just watching TV and the police just came and we were all arrested that time. And what did the police tell you? Yeah, they said we are drug dealers. Drug dealers? Yes. And what did you say? I said no, I'm not drug dealers. I said yes, we are drug dealers. To the 13, just two, two days in Austria, then I was in love. That's not, I cannot speak nothing in German that time. When I feel that, you know, I'm, I'm gonna go out tomorrow, the, the same night, I will say, well, it's not me. They're talking about drug, but drug is not my, my way, so I was still in confidence. I'm going out the next day or the same day. Yes, I believe they, if they were doing it or they are part of it, I have no idea. It's just like, for me, I would say, I'm gonna go out. Well, I just, I was like, I was not, I was not worried, you know, because I knew what I'm doing, I knew what I've done, I knew what is drugs, so I, I was not, nothing worried about when the police arrested me. Just maybe I was at the wrong place, at the wrong time, that's what I think, but to say I'm going to go for being imprisoned for drug, no, I was not worried. That came on my mind, I'm going to go out. After they questioned me, then they took me back to the prison, they brought me, questioned me again, then from there they have to transfer me to, uh, to Giacomini. So Giacomini, then they say I have to wait two weeks to see the judge. Two weeks? Then, yeah, I wait two weeks to see the judge. The judge said, well, the police say you're a drug dealer. They believe you came from France, you brought something here, then we're going to keep you again for another two, two months. So two months continue, two months. Another two months continue, another two months continue. And that was, did you have the right to call your family and inform them? And I was not given no right for nine months, nothing. No, absolutely zero. They didn't allow me to talk to nobody at that time. But the discrimination didn't come on my mind. It came very late. The, the time it started coming on my mind, when they start talking about voices, they start telling me things I didn't do. I don't know whether it's justice system. They start telling me they got my voice. They start telling me I bought one kilo of cocaine from France. They start telling me, well, you're gonna stay here for long. You are a drug dealer because you work with these people. But things start going that I start feeling this is not justice anymore. For me, it's not a justice because they caught nothing with me. They, they didn't no see anything with me. There was no proof. There was no evidence. None of these guys said this guy is a drug dealer. I'm clean. But then they were insisting, yes, I'm the boss. You're the boss. I, I'm, I'm, the, I'm the one that organized everything. I'm the one that gave them drugs to sell. So I was giving all the accusation on me. So then I was just, okay, I have to wait. But I was start feeling very angry, very angry. I cannot have patience. But I start feeling there's something wrong. This is not more about justice. It's about maybe they try to discriminate me now. Because keeping someone with no proof, no evidence, nothing absolutely, for me it was not a good sign. Well, they gave me the government lawyer, which represented me, which is Mag Magister Peshner, who used to come and see me, telling me it's a justice system, you have to be patient. Then after that one, I started writing to an Amnesty International, I wrote a letter to Human Rights in Strasbourg, they replied me, they said, well, I think Austria have their own system of justice. You have to be patient and wait until they finish everything. If they finish and you are not found guilty, we're going to take over. But I wrote to all this Amnesty International, I wrote to um, European Court of Human Rights in Strasbourg, that's what I want. Because I find myself now a victim of discrimination. So they start keeping me, keeping me along for one year, one year, two months, one year, four months, one year, six months. That was still not proof. You start keeping a person Telling him, yes, you did it. We know you did it. We're going to find something against you. That's all they always tell me. The police tell you, yes. also the other prisoners. The, yeah, the prisoners. Yeah. They say, you know you did it. The prisoners tell you, say, yeah, fatty, we know you did it. Just say the truth and go out. We know they're going to find something against you. And what else did they, did they tell you? If you say you were guilty, what? Well, they say if I say guilty, they'll give me a small sentence. A few sentences, like a few years and go. 
But if they find something against me, you're going to be like 10 to 15 years in prison. But I said, well, I prefer to go for 10 for 15 years because I didn't do nothing. I never worry, I never scared. I know my time is going to waste. It's going to last long, but I will come out one day. I never get worried because I was confident I didn't do nothing. So I just left everything in the hands of God. I was just praying to God every day to judge between me and the justice. Mm -hmm. Because God, I believe that God is there and he's seeing the right thing. God knows what I've done. So I was just, with my faith, I just leave everything in the hands of God. God is judge between me and them. God, you know everything, you see everything. But we believe in God that God sees everything, he knows everything. That's okay, God judge between me and the justice. And find out that I got the justice. I said to my lawyer, I have a problem here. I, I'm not going to go back. I'm going to stay here. I decided to stay here and to look for a job. But then I was given permission to go back to France and follow my case. But I don't want to go back to France because I lost everything there. I had to go start fresh. Now I decided to stay in Austria to start looking for a job, start a new life, but it was very difficult. I went to two or three places in a restaurant to, to wash plates. They say, well, you cannot speak Dutch, so we cannot give you the job. So I got a job at where the, where the um, wash cars and all these things. I went there for a week because the guy said, well, I don't think you cannot speak better jobs. I'm not, I, cannot, I, I cannot take you because you cannot speak Dutch. So because of that, I would just spend only one week at the working place. When you walk in the street before you go back home, at least me personally, people say, oh, Swaz Africa, bus max to here, get my internet line. This was a big, very insulting to me. Very, very insulting, it's very provocative. And I was very... Young people, old people? And mostly are old people. Most, most, most of the time of nine, it's old people doing that, old women, old men, it's all, so as I fixed that. The worst time was, I came from Caritas that morning, I went to the park just to relax, when an, an old woman comes with her dog, I was lying on the bench, just nice, hey, hey, that's my story, yeah, it's for hunting. That's for dogs. Yeah, yeah, it's for dogs. So that's, she said, yeah, for dogs. I was very angry, and I responded to her, telling her everything, then she said he's going to call the police. And I said, well, you can call the police if you want. You can't tell me here for dogs. I'm just sitting in line, you tell me here for dogs. That morning, I was very angry, so... But, you know, sometimes the word is, is a big word. I don't want to use it, but I can see. She, well, she, can, she can't do that to an Austrian man. When I was in prison, after, I said, but Austria, especially grass, the people are like Hitlers. People say that. They say, because Hitler is from here, the people are not good. Well, I, I replied to them, not everyone is bad. I'm not worried about people. I just say, well, you always meet good people and bad people. No matter where you come from, whether you're black or white, you're always bad. If they are bad, maybe one person is bad among 10 people. So I cannot judge one because of 10. Always you're gonna find nice people. People start telling me, you have to be careful, Austria is different from France, it's different from UK. And I say, yes, but you can never tell one bad to all. So I don't want to say, oh, I was in Austria, she did to me, I have to pay back, I have to revenge. Never will I allow anybody to do such things because it's not part of our system. Our people is to welcome people. Imagine people going to Africa, the way they were welcome. No matter how they are bad, nobody care. Everybody giving them smile, big smile. So I don't think if that person go to Austria, that Austria woman go to in Sierra Leone, wherever, and I say, oh, this was a woman who did that to me, nobody's going to revenge. I don't believe in revenge. She's going to be welcome to me. But that we teach her, when she comes back, she will change. You know, some, if you revenge, you make people bad again. People get bad and bad when you revenge. But when you show people, no, don't worry about that, they change, they're human beings. They will change their way. They say, oh, I'm ashamed. Now, this guy, I push him in Austria, but now they welcome me here. People are still victims of discrimination, still. We have them everywhere, but I think for Austrians, it's still a long way to go. Where people feel it, people know, people understand. But in France, you don't feel it much. It's there, but you don't feel it because the society is accepting it. If you go to the UK, the society is accepting it. But Austria, the society is not accepting it yet.
you, you don't belong here, you don't belong to this society, you have to go where you belong to. And this is what we try to fight against. That we're all the same people, no matter how. You're white or black, we're the same people. We all have a value as a human being. I'm a human being, I'm a human being, that's all we have a value. That's what I believe. Yeah, we need people to be to intervene, we need people to tell people, no, stop it. Tell people, don't don't be scared, don't worry, tell them no, stop these people, stop saying that to the people. We are all one. If you really positive, you're really fighting against discrimination, you hear such things, people are saying to other people, you should stand and stop it. Tell them to stop. But we are no more in that those days. We are now in new generation where. Definitely, I would like people like your type or anybody who is against discrimination to say that to the other people, to stop saying that to people. After 18 months, I want justice. Then the, the, the judge told me, you ask for compensation. Then we start asking with my lawyer for damages, because it's not only, because the minimum, like the time I spend in prison, is 100 a day. That's the government law, that's the law. Yeah. At least I should got about 48,000, that's the minimum the shipping. So my mother said, no, it caused a lot of damages on you, that they have to pay. You lost everything in France, you lost everything there, you lost, they have to pay a lot of damages in your life. This is your freedom, this is everything about you. This is the minimum, whether we go to court or not, they're gonna give it to you. You say, okay, let's start with 218,000 to ask. But you're not gonna have that one. Maybe you expect to have 100, 150,000. But not at all. The worst is my compensation. I got less than that. Mm -hmm. yeah. If you want to know the amount, I can tell you I got less than that. So I was supposed to have more, like I spent 488 days. Like it's about 48,000. So they gave me less than that, mm -hmm. which is not fair. That is not, that is not fair. That is a big, big discrimination. I would say, why they did it to me? Why? Because I'm not an Austrian, or I'm not from here? Because the minimum is not me, it's not my law, it's the law of the government. And we have to give him the money. The judge said, go ask for your conviction. He is, he's a justice man, he knows the law. Say, so go and ask for your conviction. They're going to give it to you. So why did they give me my right? I warn it, I clear my name. To get my composition, to start my new life, they refuse to give everything to me. And that is a big discrimination, like I always say. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's why I decided finally to go from Austria. In London, I'm comfortable there yeah? because I don't, at this moment, find any discrimination in the state at work, nowhere. Maybe they have it on their mind, but they cannot show it out, they cannot, they cannot take any action or whatever. Mm. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. in London it was easier to find a job? Yeah, very, very easy indeed. Because when I went to London to look for a job, I got it within a week. So I got it immediately, I was employed full time. So I got it, yes, I was so lucky. It's a lucky then, it's not, it's a lucky and uh, to get a job, a full time job within a week, and that's the job I'm doing at this moment. I'm a bicycle mechanic now. And uh, we, we, we make the bicycle, that Evan cycle where I walk, and uh, so I work. Immigration? And um, it's a struggle. Diversity, that jump that one. It doesn't count, it doesn't matter. Mm. <laughs> War is not a place. not accepted. The best thing. Best way forward. The positive man. Always. The value I have my value, I still have, like, I'm, I'm still happy that I got my freedom. I do my things on my own, and I can express 
myself and I can send a message to people like what I'm doing now, this is a big value for me. Now because this is a big value, I can say, wow, my freedom was seized. I'm out, I'm a free man, and I can tell we all need freedom, we all need to be part of a society. The freedom is my force, something I was fighting for when I came to Europe. Okay. I want to be free, move around, be with people. Tell us about the soul of Fatih. Well, I didn't suffer a lot. I, have I got a lot of experience, a lot. Fatih got a lot of experience that I want to send to the people, to the world, that we should be college, we should live one, should have faith and, and not, never try to revenge. And force, focus and positive, always. That's me. I never, I never get discouraged. I always focus and always confidence is going to change. Always me is gonna change. It's a long process. That's me. No matter what you do to me, you're gonna change. The cities are gonna change to the way you want it. But you, you must remain focused. That's me. I'm always remain focused and positive. Always. That's me. And I'm gonna work with people at all time. You need me. I'll be here.